Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Overwatch All-Stars Trials presented by Star Esports. Today, we're going to be watching Prospect take on Cryptic, a match that actually happened relatively about a month ago. And uh, casting day will be me, poor Zach, with my co-caster, Beanies. What's up, everybody? How we doing today? How you doing there, poor Zach? I'm doing pretty good, man. After watching the VOD against these two teams, I'm actually really excited to see what it's going to be like with them now both going into it, knowing kind of the strategies that the other may play. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they choose to play this new meta. You know, some people might want to go for that ever so memeable, you know, three, four shields composition where you just pull out a Symmetra, Orisa, and Sigma. Maybe we'll get some fun stuff. Maybe we'll see some Genji Tracer, some, you know, classic dive. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to see some dives, this is definitely probably the team where you're going to want to see it. Last time on Numbani, they actually uh, ran a lot of dive, but that map more being towards that. Right now, though, with Sigma and the double barrier kind of being at play, uh, it's going to be a little bit more um, probably sustained. And when you're going to be on that defense, it's definitely when you're going to be running on the offense. Maybe you still like to run that, or maybe you run something like the dive into that. Um, but I think we'll just have to wait to see what they decide to do. Exactly. I mean, that's the, that's the fun of this whole new meta we're in, the whole new like gray area where people are still figuring out how to play this 2 meta properly. And ultimately, maybe if you have a really good Doomfist, they just win out over everything you decide to play. Yeah, Doomfists right now are super strong in this meta purely because they're able to get so much damage through the shields because, well, with Doomfist's Rocket Punch, it doesn't get stopped by shields like a lot of things does. And I think that's also kind of why we've seen a big surge in Symmetra where she can just start firing off the shields and just get more powerful while she breaks the shield. Her ammo doesn't deplete because it also feeds off of those. So as soon as those barriers go down, everybody needs to start running for the hills because that's got to be a lot of damage going on to your team. Mm -hmm, exactly. And speaking of barriers going down, speaking of running for the hills, Seeing something like a Bastion composition come out, seeing a nice little tried and true bunker with uh, Protect the Present is something that we also might be seeing on not only these defenses, but the payload maps. Because a lot of teams, you know, like to go for that safety. And once they secure that first payload take, they can just focus on holding that payload and moving it safely through the map with, you know, the Bastion, the Baptiste, the Mercy, maybe. Yeah, that's always definitely a strategy that you can fall back towards, or that's going to be something you want to start off with, see how far you can get with it, or maybe it's something you want to pull out at the end, just to kind of maybe surprise the enemy and get a little bit farther than what they uh, originally thought that you are going to be able to. But a lot of these maps that we're going to be playing today have actually been reruns of what happened last time they played together. Mm -hmm. The only difference actually being this first map we're going to be coming up on Oasis, where at first they actually played on Lijiang Tower, where it looked a lot more 50-50 between the teams. Um, so seeing it come to Oasis, what do I really expect for this? I'm not quite sure. Um, probably might see a little bit of Farah on a, one of the maps that are more open, just like Gardens, uh, a map very known for Farah play. So I think maybe if you want to try to run something a little more dive oriented, maybe you go for that or you wait until you get to city center where you can kind of jump onto that high ground and take it from there, but we'll see. And uh, honestly, speaking of Oasis, seeing University is something I really would like to have a chance to watch if we get to see all three of those maps because university brings such a different kind of uh environment to the game than we do see on city center and we do see on the um the other one that's slipping my mind right now but it, the, the close core is fighting and the tight engagement is going to be something that you don't really get to see on the other two maps of oasis and i think we might be able to see a little a little different of a meta form on that single map you know maybe see like azaria come back out something very like close quarters fighting kind of combat yeah, like maybe like a Ryan Zarya along with maybe a Doomfist definitely on the DPS there because with that tank combo, you really don't have to worry about shields as much, whether if you were playing the Orisa Sigma just uh, counterplaying, uh, mirroring it actually. If you go with that Ryan Zarya, you can just have a Ryan with maybe a Lucio and the Doomfist. You just speed in there. You just completely ignore the Orisa shield. It's down for another eight seconds. And Orisa is just basically a free battery until that Fortify runs out. And then you got to like wait for them to actually go all the way back, then the Orisa gets all their health back, then they got to try to re-engage, and that's going to be really hard if they don't have a Lucio or uh, something to kind of help them get up there a little bit faster. So Ryan's actually, on paper, I should say, um, somewhat of a counter, actually, to this double shield because none of his damage is affected by shields except for his Earth Shatter, which can be blocked by them. Yeah, but that is a big cooldown he has to worry about, you know, getting that blocked. I, I've been there, I've been on the receiving end of thinking you have that Orisa shield timing just perfect, and she drops it right as the hammer down comes out. It's a really poor thing to experience, but 
uh, something I want to move to and get your opinion on is the support choices that we might be seeing between these two teams. Because we talked about the tank line, we talked about potential DPS, but the support meta. In the pro scene, we're seeing, you know, a lot of Moira, Lucio, a lot of these mobility supports, you know, healing through the shield, coalescing through the opponent's shield. Do you think we'll see that kind of similar meta here? Or might we see, you know, some skill development with an Ana with a Zenyatta? Is that at all possible? I think that majority of what we're going to be seeing is that Lucio Moira. You might see the uh, Mercy come out and the Ana come out on maybe a more dive-oriented map or one with a little bit larger of a sight range um, just to kind of help that out. Um, one person I actually think that we would be likely to see here is maybe even a um, Baptiste instead of possibly a Moira, depending on how close the teams know they can play to each other because Moira is a lot of that uh, healing factor of everybody just being able to clump together and it's not a single target healing like Mercy uh, and Ana, but rather a group and Baptiste is the same way. If you're close enough to him and everyone's in close proximity and you use that healing grenade, it's going to heal everybody up there. So maybe if you want to run that place of the Moira, it's going to be a little bit risky, but you're also going to have the immortality to work off of alongside the beat if uh, your Lucio is able to build that up. But that's something you want to also be careful that you don't use in tandem, uh, which is something that we have actually uh, seen in the past. And yeah. normally it means that you're about to get rolled exactly double support ulting is never a good time and the supports know that they screwed up and it's the worst feeling especially now with ultimates charging so much slower was it like 12 percent? i think they charge slower yeah it takes 12 more percent. Percent. so mm -hmm. that beat is like 10 times more valuable if you want to be technical i'd say 12 times more valuable but i think that seeing someone show their proficiency and their ability to work with their partner and coordinate these support ultimates is going to be crucial because like we said, Lucio beat, you can't miss that, but the Moira beam, you know, you might have a little more leeway with throwing out that ultimate at, at your will. Yeah, I think that what really makes the Moira a little more like the usual main support is because of her ability to throw out that orb and use the coalescence and not have to worry about any shields, like you said. Um, so normally that is what you're probably most is Lucio Moira. Unless, of course, they are running maybe a Farah or maybe a Divish comp. Yeah. So we're going to get those questions answered here as we're loading up. Onto our first map of this series, Oasis is the Battleground. We highlighted what these teams could be running, what compositions we might be seeing. And I think it's time for them to finally show us what they're made of, slowly but surely. Yeah, starting off here on, I believe this is City Center. That's what I called yeah. it earlier. I, I could be absolutely wrong. I do believe it's uh, City Center. It is City Center? All right, rock I on. I do believe um, yeah, but going here, I think maybe if they really wanted to try to run a Farah on a map other than Gardens, this would definitely be the map to do it. Uh, it's very open, but you just got to be careful of uh, the enemy getting over to the high ground where they're going to be able to shoot you much easier, even if they don't have that specific um, hit scan player. Yeah, and holding on to that hit scan player and making sure that they're ready to counter a Farah, mm -hmm. something you might not predict. That, that's when you get into this whole level of, you know, trying to play mental chess with your opponent, try and read what are, what are they going to come out with? Are they expecting us to run this Farah? And right now it's looking like Cryptic are prepared to not only send their own Farah out, but deal with an opposing Farah, putting Kool-Aid guy onto that soldier, a very capable hit scan hero, able to run off on his own and handle whatever enemies in the sky he may find. Yeah, and right now with the team comps, it's a little bit interesting, actually, if you're looking at the differences here with the Hammond instead. Um, I think I would have preferred having that D.Va uh, like they do over here on the other side, but uh, Hammond still can be able to dish out a lot of damage if people are close together and able to hit through yeah. shields. Kool guy, though, able to get the first kill here. Yep, Cryptic striking first, but Libata coming from Prospect side, taking out kool guy on his own. We highlighted the power a good Doomfist can have. Is Libata able to summon that inner Goku, summon that inner Super Saiyan, and just punch his way into the victory zone? Unfortunately, it looks like the side of Cryptic are going to slowly but surely win out on this fight as Prospect are just biting at the scraps right now, trying to get themselves any last moment kills they can receive. But being retired, gets sent back to spawn. The only two left are going to be Estal and Maricat, and they're just delaying the inevitable. First point going over the Cryptic. Yeah, and honestly, that was a really good job um, by the side of uh, Pro or Cryptic because not only were they able to get that first pick off really fast, but they were able to take control of that high ground over by the jump pad uh, in a very good fashion, too. 
they made everybody else who was up there have to drop immediately because they're already down their main tank, so they got to back off and try to get some space and wait for them to come back, and that just gives them the time to slowly pick away at them until finally they can't even do anything. Yeah, and we see this slippery composition that Cryptic is running, having these two main tanks so... I guess mobile, they're so independent, they can handle themselves in most situations. We see the Primal Rage comes out with Alithia coming in, slamming down, getting a solo kill onto Libata, following up with a barrage, but then retired, will not see any results come out positively for that one. This is just Cryptic's fight going their way as they need to summon that Coalescence just to secure these kills and keep their main tank alive. But Trexwing trying to bring back the fight, trying to keep it going for Prospect. Unfortunately, he will get dropped, and Prospect, they're just delaying their depth. They're just waiting out this timer and get, making it even harder for them to come back and retake this point. Yeah, right now, you can see that a switch has been made. Uh, Libata is actually over on the McCree now instead of previously where they were on the Doomfist, but now Ben Retired has actually moved over to that off of the Farah. Um, mainly, you, they just haven't felt comfortable running this far here so far. Clearly, guys is able to put in so much uh, damage to either make them back off or eliminate them in general. So, uh, coming up onto here, they got to be really careful, and I think their big thing is going to be taking out that far in the sky. I know they really haven't been getting all the picks, but they have definitely been putting in the damage to make it easier to finish them off. And they're going to have to make that damage count right now. We are at 87%, and the barrage will come out early, but no any kills, he will get dropped by who will now use that high noon, but that clock is going to be ticking onto nobody. He does not get a single kill for it with a Diva Bomb coming in. I spoke a little too soon. He does take out Cow. That's two kills for two ultimates. And Prospect, they pay a lot. They invest a ton, but they do eventually retake the point, and they have themselves a tall task having to defend 99% of the point. Yeah, and when you really look at these ultimates now, uh, I mean, they kind of had to use as much as they could. You know, it's nearing the end, 99%. And counting, you know, you don't want to quite give up the point without still having those ultimates in the bank. So just want to try to use what you can to take it over. Unfortunately, <laughs> meant that they had to put in at least, I think it was yeah. about four ultimates, maybe more. A whole um, bunch, I think it was but four. But they, they did put in a few. But ultimates still aren't very varied between both of these teams right now. Big Head really the only one with an ultimate in hand. And even then, everybody on the side of Prospect is now building up to their ults closer and closer. So yeah, and... Speaking of that, Libata gets his high noon right there after taking out the Lithia, picks up a kill on the big head, and now Prospect seem like the ones running the show right now on the back of Libata and that McCree. He's landing these left clicks. He's dealing damage to the tanks, trying to eliminate him. And fortunately, we're going to see Prospect push back Cryptic yet again, get themselves 50%, and now it looks like we have ourselves a matchup. Yeah, Libata's actually doing a really good job now of not only uh, securing those eliminations, but making sure that Far Mercy sees absolutely no value in the skies. Whether it's taking down the Far first, the Mercy first, or just completely taking them both out and making them not able to really do anything. They're definitely doing their job right here, and now it's rearing towards over that 60% mark, so they're probably only going to have a couple more fights here on the side of Cryptic, so what they're going to want to do here, honestly, I think they might want to switch off that Far Mercy if this next push doesn't work out. Well, we'll have to see. This is a big EMP that comes in. Unfortunately, it only gets one member, but it's a one at that, taking out the Doomfist, making this a 5v6. That is a lot of damage missing from your team composition, and the Coalescence is not enough to keep up Sunbun. That Diva Mech will go down and send back to the Scrapyard. Maricap following soon after, and Cryptic, they took a few fights. It may have taken a whole bunch of percentage, but they are finally going to get themselves a victory here, and they're going to take round one on Oasis. Yeah, right now, he you see Ben retired, just trying to get in there and just try to keep a little bit more of that percentage, keeping the dream alive. Uh, now coming in with more ultimates, just stalling out the point as long as they can. It's probably going to be a lost fight here. But they're still going for it. They're doing an amazing job of keeping that overtime clock running down and waiting for more people to get to the point as it looks more and more doable. We'll see how this Diva Bomb fares out, but now with so many picks coming out, it's going to be a little yeah. hard for them. Notorious just controlled this fight. He took command. He decided he wants this matchup to end as soon as possible, and he's going to make sure he gets that job done. Dropping two members. A Diva Bomb comes in as well as a mech is lost for the side of Prospect. They lose their Lucio. They lose their Moira. And while Doomfist may come back, he's just going to meet a wall and meet his Doom. Round one going over the Cryptic. Yeah, and I mean, you know, what seemed like it was a one-sided affair at first, quickly switched when Lobata switched over to that McCree and Ben Retired was over on the Doomfist. They definitely prevented that Far Mercy from seeing as much value, but with the EMP coming out, even though it only did get Ben Retired, like you said, it was a lot of damage that they're going to be losing out on now. I mean, Doomfist is arguably their main damage output uh, just because of his rocket punch, um, but, you know, you just kind of had to fall back and 
let them take a little bit of space, but that little bit of space is exactly what they wanted to get out of it. And not only did they take that space, they took a little bit more and they were just able to get slowly consistent picks until finally everyone just kept trickling in from overtime. Mm -hmm. And that stall, sometimes it can be deceptively tricky, deceptively vengeful, I'd say. Because when you get one pick on the stall and all of a sudden the hamster comes back, a monkey comes back, you get the whole idea. But right now we got to worry about some Reinhardt showing up, just like I talked about before. This Reinhardt Zarya coming out here on University. Kool-Aid guy with the May getting the first kill onto Binrin Tires, Doomfist. And right now, this composition from Cryptic looks so difficult to deal with. Yeah, and what's strange about it is how much shielding the other team has, but because they have that Reinhardt and that Lucio to kind of help oh. speed everyone around. They're able to put through all that damage. Ooh. Been retired, punching Cow in the face. You hate to see it. He gets dropped, ultimately. But that support, man, he's going to be feeling that for a while in his nightmare. Yeah, now I imagine Prospect are going to be going over to switch um, back over to a similar comp, mirroring in yeah, a... Yeah, their own right now. now. Yeah, I imagine the Sing was actually really close to his ult right now, Sunbun. And they got to be worried about Big Head's shadow right now. I don't know if they've been keeping track of it, but he has it. So he's probably going to be looking for him to use it here. Oh, there's only one support left, but a massive shatter by Big Head right there, dropping four members of Prospect. And I was going to say that they lost their support early on, but Big Head taking control of this fight and shattering four members of Prospect's lineup. Yeah, that was going to be a hard one to predict, honestly, because just after the first fight, you know, maybe you don't think the Ryan has quite as much charge as he does there with his ultimate, but he was just going in and just swinging a bunch, you know, and that's how he gains his alt charge. So of course he's gonna have it coming this next fight. Um, but now with Sunbun, got the Graviton, or yeah, Graviton Flux or something like that. I forget exactly what it's called. He's got the Flux. I know that part. He's gonna be able to pull up quite a few. Gravitic Flux is the name of the game and Sunbun drops the hammer onto multiple members. Notorious, the only one with Alithia getting one kill returned onto Prospect, but with Libada's High Noon coming in, a crucial pick for this team, Prospect finally is going to take control of the point, and it only took them 76% this time. Well, yeah, it only took them the 76%, but now you gotta think going into this next fight, uh, Cryptic, they have grab. They're gonna have their beat because they didn't use it earlier to stop yep. that Sigma ultimate. And all you really have from the side of Prospect is a beat to try to stay out the grab but you're also going to have the coalescence coming up you're pretty close to having your meteor strike up as well so you got to really be careful going in this next fight you want to use that lucio beat at the right time to try to take out the right things and even then it might not even be enough hopefully they find a way to make it enough because right now prospect has to play with fire if they lose one fight they might be on the verge of just dropping this whole map cryptic though slowly but surely Making their way into the point. Off the back of their Reinhardt, a Graviton Surge comes out, but a Shatter is thrown down onto the main tankless team. This offense is looking a lot like defense right now because they're turning tail and running away. Prospect, a fantastic hold, and at 51%, this is, gives new life to this team. Yeah, that was amazing. That's exactly kind of what you wanted to see happen there. The beat was able to kind of deny some damage, but before damage could even be put out, Miracat just decided, you know what, I'm just going to shatter all of them. They're not even expecting it. So that that just completely puts them on the ground, running them useless. And then everyone can just run in and clean them up. So Ooh. now you're going to have the Sigma ult. They're not going to have their Lucio ult. So it could be pretty big here. Notorious goes in, gets a solo ultimate down, does not kill anybody. Unfortunately, a high new will come out from Libata trying to return damage down onto the opponents. But Cryptic able to counteract just quick enough. Unfortunately, not too fast because Libata gets two kills with the high noon. Maricat charges out Big Head with a shift looking so good. And with 90% of the point taken, only 8% left. Cryptic does not look very promising to take back University. And it looks like we are going to be making ourselves to a round three here on Oasis after this. And not quite after the stall is going to be able to come through. Losing the Lucio, though, in the Doomfist. Two very big players, especially when it comes to movement on the side of Prospect. But the, the fight's just going back and forth right now. Honestly, Kool-Aid guy whipping out that Blizzard. That was a very good ultimate right there. Five for his team. But will it be enough? Because Lee Bada, this high noon machine, is just firing out left clicks. 81% to another ultimate right now. That is so much damage being dealt by this McCree. And nobody's even focusing on him. He's getting free rain onto the whole field and he drops a high noon takes out astro and look at that prospect getting themselves a round victory and we are going to be making ourselves 
A little comfy here on the Oasis. We got a third round coming up. Yeah, we do have a third round. I mean, what a crazy way to have a round two play out. No matter what, how everything went there, it just kind of seemed like things weren't going to quite work out for um, Prospect. But, you know, I mean, the high noons coming out from Labada, and it was... It was just insane. Like, he just held it for so long, so then everyone just kind of pretty much walked back into it thinking, oh, he's done. It's fine. We can just go in. Mm -hmm. And then the shatter from Meerkat to stop the uh, aggression coming in from Cryptic. All, all around, everybody did a really good job there to kind of keep that second point to Prospect's favor. Yeah, but Cryptic, if they just turned their attention to Libada in that last fight, he wasn't getting focused down at all. So we have to see if Cryptic are aware of their lack of focus and their lack of targeting. If they're going to change that for this last engagement. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't look like they will. Been retired. Taking out Astro first. Sunbun following up with a kill onto Big Head. And with a 4v6 in the favor of Prospect. Kool-Aid guy trying to salvage the fight. But I don't think this is looking very promising for them, Zach. No, not at all. Losing out on your Moira right as the fight starts is probably one of the worst things that could have happened there. Um, but... Now that they have the point, they're going to have to take so much more time uh, on the side of Prospect to actually, or on the side of Cryptic, uh, to make their way in here. So, right now, I think they're actually looking better on the side of Cryptic, or Prospect, gosh darn it, uh, to actually do something uh, because of this far in the air. Yeah, and look at that. The far on the side of Cryptic is just raining hell. Notorious getting very close. One kill trade up for each team. Doomfist trade out for Mercy. Kool-Aid guy getting a kill of his own, but Maricat lining it up as well back and forth fight on the point which is still in favor of prospect they're still gaining percentage and Maricat and sunbun finishing off two kills of their own this fight which looks so even before is now going in the favor of prospect with cryptic having to die or get out of the point alive yeah and right now looking at the ultimate percentage for both prospect and cryptic you know there's a a little bit of a favor towards one take a wild Ooh. guess um but no coming up on the coalescence you're gonna have beat probably uh depending on how far this uh next fight goes but if you're looking over here on the side of cryptic you're gonna really be banking on this barrage to be able to do something yep notorious has a lot on his plate right now he will need to make sure that this is a well worth it ultimate but libata oh. takes out the pocket cow's mercy is gone and with 70 percent on the point taken they're entering one fight territory very shortly and they are not disengaging they are committing to the fight right now the barrage comes in from behind and takes alibaba but he will not get anyone else he will get dropped very very low but kool-aid guy the symmetra is going onto the point and that beam is so darn powerful when nobody focuses her down sunburn gets one but this fight somehow goes into the favor of cryptic and they're gonna flip the point at 92 percent uh you know looking at that fight from the start of it with cow being gone you i really didn't expect anything to come out of it but then they were just able to back off wait for cow to start making their way back and actually notorious was able to get up behind and take out libata i believe with the uh barrage or maybe it was t-rex one i'm not i don't quite remember but they, the barrage, they were able to get the pick yeah Ooh, they were, been they were able to take though. that pick Notorious just started these fights just keeps getting these fists which are really impressive again look at that <laughs> another he's just charging right in front and they're doing nothing the best entrance is just right through the front door i guess big head kool-aid guy lighting up the kill feed deciding to match the damage been retired has been laying out and with alithia joining in right now prospect this fight looks so promising their doom fist did everything they needed but dang it cryptic turned it around and have 43 percent of the point in their control and I think this is kind of the feeling you remember when there was the goats up. It didn't matter if you even had one or two picks, depending on how well the enemy team played defensively. And that's kind of what we've been seeing right now. They're, they're going to be down a couple people, one or two, but they're going to have the turrets set up on points, and they're going to have to focus around, turn around, get Look those at turrets out of the me. way. And then they're just completely gone. Meanwhile, going into this now, two, both of the tank halts up. Yeah, so look at that Gravitic Flux. This Gravit Gravitic Flux, Tongue Twisters out here, can really make a dent into the offense. We have to watch because we're at 72% right now. So if Cryptic wins out in this fight, they might be in very good territory to take themselves a map number one victory. The Gravit Flux comes out, only gets two members, slams them down, and it's enough to take out Maricat. Estal is left on the point, but now with the Symmetra laying down her ultimate and 85% of the point in favor of Cryptic, this is just the support lineup trying to stall out as long as they can, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I don't know if there's enough time to stall this out. I think Cryptic are going to win. 
Yeah, I really don't see Prospect being able to even make it back to the point in time. Ben Retired actually went for the kill instead of trying to get over to the point, but of course he's going to switch over to the Hammond by Miracat just to be able to get that stall and just fly his way around the ring, keep everyone focused on him. Meanwhile, his team comes in. Yep, a Gravitic Flux comes out from Sunbun. Unfortunately, only gets one member, but maybe that's enough to start dealing the damage they need. One dent can cause a whole wreck, if you ask me, but Big Head is doing such a good job at getting that paint back onto the car, making sure they're good to go, and driving themselves right into a 1-0 map score victory right as they finish these kills off. But dang it, Doomfist is annoying to kill. Yeah, Doomfist can be really annoying, especially when we get so much shields from all of his ability usage there. But right now, it just looks like the time is inevitable. And uh, probably going to see Cryptic picking it up here in a second. But more people I just keep know. coming in from the side of Prospect, actually. Yeah, they're getting these down. nice stalls. I mean, the second they get off this overtime payload, though, they're going to lose. And look at that. Yep. There it goes. 1-0 Cryptic taking a nice lead. Yeah, and I mean, it was crazy. Not only... That first round kind of surprisingly was the less hectic. The second round, super hectic. It just seemed super back and forth, but then Prospect was able to grab that point and hold on to it for a super long time once uh, actually Cryptic was able to get it up to about 70 something percent, 76 or something like that. And yeah. then just everything worked out for them. They were able to hold the point still and they took that map. And then round three came along and it was the same story except the roles were flipped. Prospect had a really good hold onto that point for a good while, but Cryptic, once they switched it up, they got the sim and they got the double barrier, which is really hard to kind of take over. That's definitely the team comp you're going to want to have when you're on more of a defensive position, and, you know, that showed to pay off right here. Yeah, and they did such a good job at just winning these fights that they were behind. You talked about how during the GOATS meta, that was a common thing, winning these fights when you were losing some, when you were down a member. But in this kind of more spread out, a little chaotic kind of fighting, losing two members, I mean, they showed they can hunker down and they can win these fights regardless of those two picks. And we have to give kudos to Bin Retired's Doomfist. You know, Prospect wouldn't have been in that position at all to have won that first map if it wasn't for him just charging right through the front door and just power fisting everyone in front of him. Yeah, and I think really the, the DPS duo is more or less shiny from Prospect, but Cryptic as a whole team just kind of seemed to all be on the same page when it comes down to these more longer had out fights and when they really have to bunker down it just kind of seems like they have a little bit more easier of a time being on that defense and a little more of like okay we just need to watch out for people like instead of like who are we jumping on mm -hmm. exactly and you know something that might play into our next map which for those of you who may have been paying attention earlier is horizon lunar colony is really being able to target focus and eliminate these key members quickly and moving on to the next target because when you get to that second point of horizon it can be so difficult to deal with that stall and we just saw both of these teams were quite capable in holding out a stall of their own and when you get to these two cp maps coming out with a stall is the most aggravating thing to deal with because you know you thought you you were winning out the whole map and then all of a sudden a may comes out a baptiste lamp gets thrown hammond swinging around sigma comes out too and it's like when did this happen yeah, and that just, you know, it's something that's really inevitable. And, you know, they, you know, you can try to play around it. You can try to hit stuns maybe and do something about it. But when you're running a certain team comp, you may not have any stuns on hand or some that are on a really long cooldown. But while we were actually on the topic talking about those large uh, DPS really showing up, being the big guys on campus, you don't want to forget to vote for your MVP. It could be anyone from either team, support, oh, tank, yeah. DPS. Who do you think is really showing up today? Whether they're on the winning team or losing team, it doesn't really matter. Um, but while you're at it, don't forget to follow and subscribe to Star Esports as long as you want to make sure that you aren't yeah. going to be able to miss anything we're going to be putting out here. We're actually only two subs away from a fifth emote slot, and now's the best time to sub. It's September. Sub it's half off. It, well, why would right you know? Middle. You could be a star. Yeah, you could you be sub. a star at Star Esports. Exactly. I believe in you. Zach believes in you. Just, we believe in you. Just do it. Star Esports believes in you. Anyways, we're going to be going into Horizon. Oh, yeah. Horizon Lunar Colony. And So, after what we just saw, what do you think we're going to see here? Are we going to see anything less than a near, even, perfectly matchup between these two? Because I honestly think it's neck and neck, but depending on which DPS duo has their moment in each fight. Yeah, I think oh, this next map, 
last time they played was fairly dominant. Uh, Prospect was actually able to win the point super fast after holding uh, Cryptic for the whole of second point. They were able to cap the first. But that was in a little bit different of a meta. So seeing the double shields here now before, Widows were actually playing on both sides. But now I'm not going to probably be seeing that happening, I imagine, mm -hmm. because of this double barrier. And um, make sure you guys take note at home. Uh, we have switched the side. So now you do have Cryptic on the blue side and Prospect on the red side. Good call. <laughs> Gotta make sure you remember that. I don't want to be Gotta looking sure. at these lineups and calling Prospect Cryptic, Cryptic Prospect. And then I'm just, you know, like a caveman SpongeBob. Just like, what? Huh? What? Huh? What's going on? Oh, oh my God. Oh. But we are going to see something of an interesting hold, I think, coming out. I think. Coming out with a Sigma Reinhard duo is going to be an interesting way to attack this first point. I th think that's actually probably a really good way to go. Uh, oh, because they attack they this first point. They have the sim. Yeah, they have the sim to TP. You can just throw out your that Sigma now. barrier. Yeah, you can throw out your Sigma barrier to stop all the damage coming in onto the turret, or you could just use that Ryan shield, of course. And because you're not playing that Arisa, you don't have that eight second cooldown on that shield. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot easier to play that close quarters. Meanwhile, you might not you even need the barrier. Yeah. yeah, you might not even need a barrier. Ryan could just be swinging around. Meanwhile, a Sigma shield is out somewhere protecting someone, and he's mm -hmm. just able to put in through a bunch of damage too. So this is actually, uh, I'm expecting this to go pretty fast. This seems like a really yeah. good team comp. And Especially look at this double sniper we see. The side of cryptic coming out with first defense yeah that's kind of an interesting choice going with the widow especially now that double barriers are really heavy but exactly. as soon as they're going to get over here onto the point it's going to be hard for them to kind of take that space back exactly what are you going to do with your snipers when they're all in this tight fighting area with the shields protecting them libada getting two kills right now with the turrets that's what you call pve baby been retired taking out kool-aid guy we are halfway done with this first objective and half of the defense has hardly even interacted we see multiple members eventually dying and astro just having to feed his life to get back to spawn quicker that was so well done here by prospect moving themselves in, into position to full take horizon in nearly under a minute yeah, I mean, it was a super smart play by them, you know? They have everything to go right for them to have that point staying power. And now going into it, I mean, I'd be a little bit scared if I was Prospect, but, you know, Ben Retired being down now, um, you know, it's definitely not what you want to see. Definitely a heavy damage, but they're still going to go for it, of course. Yeah, and look at that Cal trying to pick up the slack for his team going full damage. Moira right now chucking out the damage. But a big man charge comes out with a Symmetra shield, but the Coalescence will ignore both of those shields. Unfortunate usage of the Symmetra ultimate, and that's Cow carrying the team right there throughout the fight with Orbit, landing some crucial Hanzo arrows, delaying the first attack, and in my opinion, the most deadly attack of the whole onslaught. Yeah, that was definitely one that you needed to win on the side of Cryptic. Not only because, well, it's second point, but uh, also because, well, you know, they had a lot of ultimates going into they that, and they had the you snowball. had to be very scared of that. They had the snowball potential ready to come up. Libata actually switches over to the Hanzo, I imagine, to kind of counter that Junkrat Hanzo on the other side to try to pick them off. But Kool-Aid guy, of course, is just going to go ahead and throw in a mine and get them retired. Yeah, and I'm surprised to see this push still come out here from uh, Prospect. You know, it's really interesting to see them try and keep this going, even though they lost a member early on. Kool-Aid guy will get dropped, but remember, they do have the spawns in their advantage. A questionable charge there onto the point, just holding shift for the hell of it, and he gets the beat to protect him, but he's going to be fighting on the point and losing a lot of HP, but Lee Bada covering his behind, oh so well, firing out these storm arrows. A tire comes in, but will not pick up any kills. Astro, though, finishing off Maricat. This somehow, in some way, is going in the favor of the offense with just Kool-Aid guy there on the point. Astro joining afterwards. This is it. We're going to see the stall point come in. We're going to see the defense get that respawn advantage. And while this attack looks so promising to start, it's just so difficult to keep it going when you happen to lose one member, two member here and there. Yeah, and right now the stall potential is actually huge, especially on this point of horizon. You're just able to come in this Hammond as long as you don't take care of him immediately. He's just going to allow his team to all come back in. And that's what we're seeing right now. Pretty much everybody now is back from the side of Prospect, but Citizen's also back, or... Cryptic also Cryptic. back, so it's really looking back and forth right now. No clear winner, but just because of spawn advantage, you know, it's probably going to be going more over towards the side of Cryptic pretty soon here. Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult for the offense to get 
some kind of lead going because once you pick up one kill the second you lose somebody it's like losing two members you know it's really hard to keep that going when the defense has these mobile heroes they can switch to and they can get that quick defense ro spawn rolling but as i say that one point one tick of the point is taken regardless of how this ends up that is a very crucial tick to take because now they set themselves up to win the map they have a little more going on afterwards and we see the minesweeper is going to be dropped by olivia <laughs> nobody's going to die just yet as i say that though it's all does fall down onto the mines and you hate to see it finally this fight ends after a single tick goes over to the side of the prospect but dang that took a long time to get that yeah, and taking a long time to get that one tick is probably going to be a big smile on Cryptic's face. I mean, they weren't quite able to stop the one tick from coming through, but I mean, at least they only had the one tick Ooh. come through. I think is the big thing here. Yeah, look at that. Cryptic getting a kill down onto Maricat. Again, getting those kills on the defense so much more important than on the offense because if you can get that single stagger kill, it's going to be delaying a lot of the offense's efforts. We see the fight still continues, though. Bim retired, trying his best to keep carrying his team like we saw in Oasis. Can he do it again on Horizon Lunar Colony? He drops into the back line, takes out Orbit. That's a single kill coming in for him, and Lee Bottle wants to light up that kill feed, too, and have some fun of it himself. He gets big head, drops him down. The Minesweeper comes out, and he's going to try and secure the point for his team, but with Cow healing up the entirety of the lineup, he has a chance to keep him alive, but Alithia and Kool-Aid Guy are just too far out of his range, and without the Coalescence anymore, it's going to be so difficult to keep your team alive, and this looks like it's going to be Prospect getting themselves a second tick. They might be making themselves a third tick. I think Prospect are going to be able to do it. They just have to deal with this one hamster. If they can get him down quick enough, they will secure the kill. They will secure the payload, and the tire comes in, but the monkey's just smacking him off the point, and that is so well done by Sunbun. Someone really just able to keep them all off the point, but with how much time they had in the bank with finishing with 144, you're going to like to see that still being on the side of Prospect, but you got to think for Cryptic, they had like, that had to be a little less than a five minute hold, I think it was, because I think they started attacking with about like 620. So oh, yeah. about like a four and a half minute hold. So they have the ability to hold it fairly well, but I think right now the worrying condition is this offense. How fast are they going to be able to actually take this? And are they going to learn from their mistake if they are able to actually go all the way through and change up what they're going to run on the defense? And so Prospect had their chance, got themselves decent time, like you said, got themselves a little bit, a little bit of time left over. They would have liked a little more, but with Cryptic showing that they are able to be a little more resilient than their opponents, can they get a little more of an advantage for themselves? Can they get maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes in the time bank. We'll have to see. And their choice of composition is going to be something, a little, that, that same idea that we saw coming out from Prospect, but a little bit of a different kind of execution to it. Yeah, I think that the Ryan's definitely better to run here than the Arisa. Like previously said, how Arisa has that uh, cooldown of about eight or nine seconds on the uh, barrier. Meanwhile, the Ryan and Sigma have no cooldown. All they have is health on it. Um, but they're actually going to switch over to Orion Zarya, which Ooh. also can be a good comp going into it. But, um, you know, the you won't break, have the same shields. I No way they stay on this. Oh, they actually are staying on the brick. Wow. I was really expecting them to switch over to Lucio. They Brig, called so you out get to see one, a lot. Dude. Wow, okay. So huh. you see the brig coming out. What do you think their reasoning is for picking this? Why are they going brig here? I don't know. At first, I think maybe it would have been to just stack it onto one person so that way they wouldn't go down as fast. But going down super fast, speak of it, Kool Aid Guy and Astro both down already. Yeah, look at that. Two members already down, almost getting themselves one tick. Unfortunately, just missing out on that. Very well responded to by Prospect. Getting their members down onto the point, securing the defense. And this offense coming in from Cryptic, definitely a little uh, lackluster, to say the yeah. least. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what exactly, like, they got so much damage put through at the start. I imagine because they've been retired. There we go. With a uh, grenade or two, but Astro now switching over to the Baptiste. Really going to be the only change here. Orbit staying on the Widow. I think they're just going to wait until they reposition and try to pick off uh, Eastal or someone. Or yeah, a little bit of the uh, Gladiators on King's Rose strat. Yeah, Except if you... they can, but Libata actually. Ooh! Wow. 
Ooh, Orbit getting two picks right there. That's doing exactly what they wanted. Two members drop, and the Shatter comes in, and there's no shield to protect them from that. Comes in way too late with Big Head securing two with his Fire Strike, and that is exactly what Cryptic needed. The dam has been broken, and now they are flooding into first objective. Yeah, they definitely were able to break it. Orbit actually was able to find themselves a sightline despite there being the Orisa barrier. I imagine it was probably placed at just an angle to where they could peek around it. They were able to pick up two, and of course, only one can be rezzed. And Big Head, with the amazing shatter, knowing that that Orisa barrier was down and that no one was going to be able to avoid it, it was like, yeah, I'll just throw it in here, secure this fight one real quick, don't mind me. And now going into it, they don't really have many ults to work with here. I think it's really just going to be about getting the ults uh, out of Prospect right now. Yep, and there is the first one being used. Been retired, uses that Junkrat tire. Gets two members. That should be the end of the fight very shortly. Sunbun gets one. Interesting to see the amplification amplification matrix used. Uh, unnecessary ultimate, to say the least. And that's just going to add into the favor of Cryptic, who are perfectly happy with taking that fight loss and drawing out two ultimates. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate there to actually see that amplification matrix be used because... It could be really good coming up here, uh, depending on how well this grab is going to be used. You're able to throw that down, and then your Junkrat's able to put through massive damage and make it really hard for them to step over onto the point without possibly getting one or two shotted by him. Um, but with this Sim Shield up now, they got a lot of help. Yep. Sim Shield is thrown down by Kool Aid Guy. One ultimate use Graviton. Next. Chucks in Bob. That's going to be only one kill, though, as Bin retires. Martadon picks up one. Cow, you poor, poor guy. Modern Warfare is getting to you. Sunbun taking out Alithia, and with Orbit only eliminating Maricat's mech, I think this is going to be a fight one for Prospect with a lot of ultimate investment coming in from Cryptic. Yeah, I'm now looking at the next fight here, you see a few ultimates coming up for the tanks here on the side of Prospect, and then over here on the side of Cryptic, you're going to be able to see the Shatter and the Coalescence. Two very good ultimates coming through here. That Coalescence is going to be used too. to target that, or that Moira down. Yeah, Orbit, Orbit is now, coming up very close to that. about three-fourths of the way there. He's getting close. Uh, I think it's going to be really hard for him to actually find value with his ult. Um, because there's so much mobility on the team. Um, plus, you have the uh, D.Va who's going to be able to eat it if they're paying attention. And keep their defense matrix... Uh, up and have good management with that so that'll be a hard one to actually see value with i imagine oh been retired and kool-aid guy both dropped both teams losing their dps but cow investing the coalescence lee bada though sending out bob and bob is just raining hell down onto the port line dropping both members and with orbit picking up one kill of his own it's going to be the only shining light in a dark dark day for these poor boys on cryptic they get sent back to spawn and they have only two minutes and 45 seconds left to try and push through objective b yeah, I really don't think they're expecting the Bob there from Libata after throwing it out at the beginning of that last fight, though. So they did have some time to make it back up, but I, even I wouldn't have been expecting that. I wasn't. I didn't even know that it was up, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's just, you know, that's how much ultimate charge Ash can generate. If she gets a chunky dynamite down every time it's off cooldown, your ultimate's going to get up so quickly. And we saw right there, Libata, look at that. Have you saw that jump? He just went up 30 ultimate charge from the start of that dynamite to the end. Ooh. Been retired, getting three kills with that tire right there. And while Orbit and Big Head, you know, they're they're salvaging something, they may actually get a tick right here. Wow, that's very well done right there by Cryptic and Prospect, giving up tick, questionable to say the least. We see two both support ultimates being used, and that fight, overall, that's going really in the favor of Cryptic if you look at their ultimates. Yeah, Cryptic is going to be really happy with that fight. They still have three ultimates, uh, halfway to a couple more. Um, but now on the side of Prospect, you don't really have much to look forward to. They already got the tick. The best chance you're going to have is throwing out an early Bob to maybe pick off one of the supports. But losing Ben Retired, a big chunk of damage now is definitely not what they wanted to see. Yep, and now we have to see how Cryptic handles this advantage. They have two kills now. Been retired, just respawn. But can Cryptic handle the advantage? Can they handle the pressure? Kool-Aid guy dropping very low, but gets out alive just at the end of that orbit. He has the Death Blossom. He has his ultimate. This is going to be on the back of him. Can he make this worth it? He uses the Death Blossom. He only gets one. He gets a huge coalescent, excuse me, a huge dragon into that Graviton Surge. Two members going down with Kool-Aid guy's dragon. A Shatter is thrown down. Everyone's just hitting Q right now on the side of Cryptic trying to see what sticks. Unfortunately for them, they're going to be seeing 
one more tick come out they have to secure this last tick but diva is trying her best to get there americat secures defending this for another day while they do lose orbit on the reaper that might be enough just to secure this defense for the side of the prospect they're coming out they have only eight percent left to hold they just have the last 30 more seconds but this offense from Big Head, this offense from Cryptic, they are so determined just to get themselves into overtime, just to give themselves a chance to win map number two. But my God, this stall from the defense is so difficult to deal with. A shatter comes in from Big Head. The coalescence used by Cow, but now Trexwing uses his own coalescence and he picks off a member. Both tanks are now down on the offense and with only 10 seconds left, this is oh going to be the God. defense. This is going to be the stall. This is going to be Prospect somehow pulling an incredible hold out of nowhere and getting themselves a map to victory. We're going to be looking at a 1-1 map score going into the third map very shortly. Yeah, I mean, everything kind of real right for cryptic going into that last fight there they picked up the bot really fast so the bob was already going to be taken out of that last fight the only ultimate they had and then they were able to pick off ben prospect so it was basically a 4v6 i shouldn't even say basically it was mm -hmm. and they were just able to stall it out for so long one person at a time that levada actually got back was able to throw down that bob it got killed by a graviton and a dragon and then levada just stayed up there uncontested the whole time and everybody was just kind of able to keep stalling the point until eventually it was just it was oh yeah it's a 6v2 now it's a 6v3 now it's a 5v3 now it's a 4v3 and then just more people fall again and again and again and it was a really good stall to actually somehow prevent cryptic from taking that last point and you know we talked about before that map even started the danger of a good stall you think you have the map one you think you have secured all three ticks and then the hammond rolls in and then the diva flies in and then the reaper comes in and then all of a sudden the coalescence is being used and everything you thought you set up so perfectly just crumbles in front of you and that's what happened to cryptic right there and so they're gonna have to mentally recover and get ready for another map because coming so close and falling short can be very difficult to deal with yeah i mean they looked like they had a really good time coming up after they were finally able to capture that first point they felt good coming into that they were unfortunately uh, not able to win that fight but then they slowly started taking it back they got one tick off and they knew like okay we got the one tick we're not gonna have to worry about the stall as much but the stall just came out so well from prospect that they were just barely able to not be able to cap that so i think like you said there needs to be a little bit more of a maybe a mental reset because right now they probably do feel a little bit down knowing that they were this close so close from being able to so cap cool. that second point that it might be a little bit affecting them right now uh in their head i mean it it's understandable too because you know it's so difficult to get all three ticks on the two cp sometimes it feels like the easiest thing in the world sometimes it just falls into place you get a full team wipe at the same exact time and the full tick the full three ticks come in but there's those times where those kills aren't coming so easy and you know you gotta stay on your target focus and when that starts to crumble when one person who's a leader dies in a fight the whole interior of a team can just fall apart and so making sure that you identify the issue and acknowledge how to deal with it at least going forward in these games is going to be crucial for cryptic and prospect showed they were able to do that very well because look at that came back from a map one loss and tied us up one one yeah and i mean now you got to think about it like it's hard sometimes to be playing up against a defense and a good one at that because uh, i forget who said this but it was you need to have a perfect attack to take it but all you need is a competent defense to hold it so i think that really just kind of plays out there because on that offense they were doing really good they had two big picks but once they got onto the point it looked a little bit more sloppy like there may yeah. not have been that target uh, prioritization so that made it absolutely so much more difficult for them to actually get these bodies off the point as fast as possible and uh, you know just like you said that target prioritization that's something that really tells how practice a team is together because anyone can get an opening pick we saw both teams have the capabilities to do it both teams have capable dps but what matters is what you do with that pick you know you have one kill how do you use your six over five to secure the next kill <gasps> excuse me and secure the next kill and the next kill that's 
that's what teamwork comes down to that's how you know you're a practice team because you can secure one kill and if you're not practice the other team can get just as lucky as you get you know a cheeky little headshot arrow out of nowhere get a random doom fist right click and next thing you know it's an evened up fight and you're back where you started yeah those are just things you kind of have to worry about but one thing you don't have to worry about is missing anything from star esports as long as you follow and subscribe half off september don't forget to vote for your mp3 mp3 that's MP3. uh that is a listening thing uh device uh i don't know how to speak english apparently huh, okay MVP. grandpa yeah <laughs> okay why don't you break out your 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 cassette player and walk on with your Walkman? I'm not taking this. All right, he did. Just, all right, he left. Well, in the meantime, you can I'm handle. Not, I forgive you. Subscribing to Star Esports, we are only two subscriptions away from that sweet fifth emote. Get us that emote. We want to be able to flaunt some cheeky little face in chat, and I know you want to also. So just give us a subscribe. It's September, it's half off, and it makes everyone happy. And you'll get to see all the cool action and tournaments we got going on here all the time. Definitely stuff to be excited about. And now going into Junker Town, when these two teams last faced off, this was a very sort of 50-50 looking map for the uh, first offense. Um, but then when it came uh, Cryptic's time to be on the offense, it did kind of uh, falter a bit. So. Prospect looks really good on this map. Cryptic, not so much, but that's from about a month ago. They could have definitely uh, picked it up or maybe lost a little bit of what they had uh, ready with this map. Exactly, and that's something we need to take into account. You know, the stats you have, they could be totally irrelevant. A day later, let alone a month later, we might see total teams. Maybe, you know, these guys are consistent. Maybe we'll see the same exact thing happened prospect has the heat behind them you know they have the momentum they're riding high right now looking at getting themselves two map victories in a row and you know what's to stop them if cryptic can't regroup like we talked about and so something you know to take into account is cryptic showed they like running those double snipers they like running a uh, widowmaker and ash maybe widowmaker hanzo and first point junker town that's a double sniper heaven yeah, it's, if you're going to want to run the double snipers, that's exactly where you're going to want to run them. Uh, because, it's, like you said, it's just so open. And I think a big thing here is that you're going to need to run the double barrier if you're on defense. Because it's just going to be so hard to stop both of those snipers coming in from those two different angles. Um, but we're going to see what's going to be happening over here on the defense. I believe it is um, Prospect? Is pro no, Cryptic is starting off here on the defense. My apologies. Yep, Cryptic. Uh, and right now, they are running a Widow. It doesn't look like they're going to run the Hanzo, though. Nope, but they have the Widow double shield. Not running the double sniper, but you know what? Orbit just wants all the attention on himself. He wants those headshots coming in. And on the offense, gonna have to see if they stick with these main tank or these two tank choices. Cause or they swap the Bastion. We might be seeing seeing a little interesting composition right here. The Sombra, Hammond, Winston going in there with a Zenyatta definitely can be a tricky composition i think to run into this defense how do you feel about it zach uh, i think this is a little bit harder of a composition to run into but i think what's really interesting here is the fact that we see a zen on the field someone who really hasn't been played super often recently because Ooh. honestly i think zen and brig are probably the two weakest supports right now but depending on how you play it right now with this winston going in on the dive and the hammond putting the discord on somebody might just melt them completely and make it a very valuable pick at that yeah, it depends on how cohesive your teamwork is, how well you can break shield. You know, sometimes it can be a little difficult to break both these shields, but if the Sigma's looking elsewhere, get that split second chance or just melt Orisa's shield and you're good to go. But Kool-Aid guy gonna get dropped after he takes out Bin Retired. Two kills going over to the defense right now, looking to hold down the fort strong against this aggressive offense. Orbit winning that Widow 1v1. Now it's gonna be his playground, having an opportunity to just fire through this tight corridor right where the payload is. And for now, defense holds out strong, two minutes, 50 seconds left. Yeah, and right now, I think what they're kinda banking on uh, for the side of Prospect is going to be this EMP that they're trying to build up right now. Um, it's going to take a long time, but someone able to pick up Orbit. Pretty big pick now. Lobata actually doesn't have to worry about where they're standing and more of just like where the people are that they're going to be able to get picks on. 
Yeah, we see Minesweeper being played right now by Sunbun, feeling himself a little bit, but he gets shut down. Control ult deleted, sent back to spawn. Maricat is using his ultimate, the Primal Rage, trying to cause a little bit of mayhem, sends Symmetra down to her depth, and she is dropped. Actually, Libata picking up that kill, but Big Head and Bam off the back of this Symmetra shield keeps the team's hopes alive, and this defense holds for another minute. We're down under two minutes left right now, and Prospect are looking for any semblance of an offense to come out right now. Yeah, right now, with about halfway of the, the timer down, it's looking a little bit scary here, but like I said, that EMP is coming up here. Of course, both Widows use their uh, little visors, so that way one doesn't get the advantage over the other. Uh, it it, it kind of stinks when you got to use it like that, but hey, I mean, you know, you'd rather just have an evil playing field. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you just read the a little too well, and Lee Bada actually orbit perfectly right there, winning that Widow 1v1. That's the opening that the offense needed. The beat is actually cancelled by the Somber EMP. Cool. Astro loses that in the middle of that EMP. That is so well timed by Bin Retired, winning that fight right there for his team, but will it be enough? Both the tanks are still alive. Zinyata gets dropped thanks to Big Head and the Symmetra turrets. And that fight, it looks so good for the offense. It looks so promising, but it's so difficult to get at both of these tanks. They have so many shields, they have so much health, and they have so much survivability. Well, the body doesn't care as long as your head's peeking out. I actually able to pick up Bam in that team fight, and it's still going on right now. Wow, look at this. Just non-stop action right here. Maricat jumps in again with a Primal Rage, but he just melted down. Symmetra throws down the universally covering shield because this whole shield will cover the entire planet. I've seen it run through my backyard when she uses her ultimate. Yeah, it's scary when that happens, especially when you're not expecting it. Maybe you're yeah. just in the backyard, just chilling out by a fire or... Just sipping then, on a little bit of tea while you read a book. And the next thing you know, there's a big old shield in your face. And then that's who you learn who your true enemies are because they can't hurt that shield. Hashtag deep. Hashtag deep. For sure. But speaking of deep, we have to see if Prospect can go deep into the back line right now because they have 10 seconds left to move past Objective A here on Junkertown. And Bam and Libata both picking up some kills right there. Losing a support versus DPS. Who's going to win out after that elimination? Minesweeper is going to be played with a bongo get drop right there by Arisa. Libata and Maricat lining up the kill feed right there with Big Head getting a kill of his own. Nobody's on the car right now. Nobody can get to it. They have to get somebody on there. But with two tanks and a Moira holding this for the defense, there is almost nobody in the game that can get past that lineup. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be hard to take back no matter what after that EMP was actually able to oh, take cow. out that beat. But then they were just able to bring it back slowly but surely with the two tanks staying on. But right now, everyone's just oh going on to the hard to stall. Really, these Cow. Widows showing up in the kill feed. It's going to be up to them, really, to kind of make this fight a win or a loss. Yeah, but both tanks from Prospect are very low. And now with the DPS coming back, trying to sustain this fight, a beautiful wall thrown down, canceling out the Widows effect. And the only way point, I think we're finally going to see Cryptic secure this defense and hold Prospect on Objective A of junker town wow incredible yeah that was really good they were able to wait out that or well really not wait out but outweigh the emp coming through even though it was able to cancel the beat both the tanks were able to stay on the point and because they have those barriers the widows out there just trying to hit something they were actually able to get bam at one point but the supports were left on point and what, are, what, what really are they going to do against the tanks they have both the shields and they have a high damage output at least sigma does Arisa, of course, if you're able to hit all your shots and get a good halt in, you can have someone stay still for a second. But trying to get into that, it was just going to be super hard for them when it was just going that back and forth. And without able to pick up the first point, you know, I mean, it's looking pretty good for the side of Cryptic. Yeah, and, you know, in the middle of that fight, I freaked out a little bit because I was watching Cow, and he chucks out a damage orb when he's at sub 30% HP. And I don't know why or how he did that, but he got a kill with it. He dropped a little bit after, and it all worked out. But whew, seeing that happen, I held my breath, and I got a, little, got a little nervous for them. But they held that defense out, so kudos to Cryptic right there. And now Prospect is going to have to try their hand at holding this defense with a little bit of a different composition. And, ooh, I, I'm liking what I see Orbit and Cal running here on Cryptic. You know, I could definitely see this going through here. Um, the Nano with the Blade, of course, is super powerful, and the only thing they really have to defend against that is going to be that Immortality. So you're going to be banking on that to make sure it's not going to be overused, used too soon, used too late. 
and yeah. make sure you have it on the right people because the nano blade is just so powerful that it's hard to do anything against that. Exactly. This composition just screams wait until you have your ultimates and you're good to go. Trex wing losing that Baptiste lamp. Kool Aid guy taking out Bin Retired. The first dent has been made in the armor. Can they fortify? Can they withstand? Orisa gets sent back flying because of a little bit of a of a flying boulder. A little bit of a damaging rock boy. But this payload, geez, getting free ground right now. Just moving up at however they want to. You can't deal with Kool-Aid guy in this bastion. They're just not equipped to deal with the damage he's pumping out right now. Yeah, and I mean it's you got that Bastion on card with the double barrier, it's gonna be almost impossible to hit him, but right now he doesn't have that barrier to keep him up as I speak about it. Yeah, but look at Orbit go! But Orbit is flying around everywhere. Orbit was just dash dancing like he's playing Smash right now. He was just going left, right, left, right. Got elimination after elimination, and that's gonna be it. We're gonna see Cryptic take a 2-1 map lead after a dominant Junker Town showing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the defense was really good. Um, but talking about the offense now, I mean, running the Bastion with the double barrier, it's so hard to fight against, so using that immortality, you're either gonna have to use it around a wall or try to put it onto the card if you all want to jump onto it. Maybe you want to try to get in there, use your Sigma Rock to kind of take that out. Um, but no matter what, it's gonna be super hard to take him. And I mean, you know, it just kind of showed up there. Sometimes it works out. I mean, we've seen Bastion and Sim played in the league recently. So seeing a Bastion come out right now, uh, really no surprise, but a really good showing. And it's it's so difficult to deal with that on the defense, because if you don't come out prepared for that Bastion, you're kind of SOL, you know, you're kind of just stuck there like, all right, well, how do we deal with this if we don't swap? We kind of have to die on cart or swap right away. You know, it's it's a really difficult situation. So if you don't predict that, it's very hard to come back from. Yeah, especially on the first point of Junker Town, because it kind of feels like it, it feels almost like a one fight lane, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's more of a two, but depending I mean, depending on where you take that fight, you know? Yeah, it really depends on where you take the fight. They tried starting it up at the spawn doors to try to get something done there. Uh, but of course, they had to fall back, uh, lose a member or so. And then they got to retry it over near the bridge. And then once you get to that bridge, it's pretty much game over from that point on. And you saw it there. They were just able to slowly put in more and more damage. And then it just out of nowhere, a bunch of people just started going in. You saw Orbit, yeah. like you said, he was just dashing, flying around. We saw Bam going in super deep and just hitting everybody with those orbs that do so much damage with Sigma. And you're able to have that rock combo, which is able to completely eliminate somebody if you hit it right. Yeah, and Kool-Aid guy was just doing so much damage that even when he got eliminated, so much focus was put on him, and he dealt so much damage that, you know, Orbit got that dash dancing. He just left, left shift, left shift, left shift, nonstop, and it was a clean fight win right there. And so, you know, we highlighted last time seeing how Cryptic can respond, and obviously they responded fantastically. Now it's back in Prospect's court. Not only did they just lose a map, but now they're backs against the wall. They're about to, if they lose Numbani right now, they're going to lose the series out cold. Yeah, and I mean, right now, 2-1, we've seen both these teams kind of go up against each other. And really, it just kind of seems to be going down to some individual play at times. Yeah. Speaking of individuals, who do you guys think is the MVP right now? You can always go down below and vote for somebody you think deserves it. And if you're willing to put in five bits, you're allowed to vote more than once. Yeah, that's right. Ooh. We're running American politics here. Money for votes. Pay this it. is pay to win. No. <laughs> you could just call us EA at this point, you know? Yeah, it's a pay to win MVP, you know? But, but um, <laughs> who is your MVP then, Zach? If you had to choose right now, who is pulling it out on either team? Give me one from each team. Okay. Because we don't know who's winning this yet. Yeah, if we all... Oof. It's so tough. I think right now, we've seen the DPS really go through for Prospect at times. So, honestly, on the side of Prospect, I'm going to say Lobata for sure, Libata. Um, mm -hmm. They've just been really performing well on yep. almost all the DPS they've played. Uh, just haven't been doing a bad job at any point in time, in my opinion. Um, maybe there's sometimes, of course, we want to go back and maybe want to do something a little different, but they've been playing really well. And if we look over to the side of Cryptic, I think Big Head's actually been doing a really good job on that tank role. Yeah, Big Head. I was going to actually say Big Head's my choice Cryptic. He is doing a tremendous job playing right now it's it's something that's really important and i think kind of underappreciated at times having 
a very solid tank line relying on your two tanks you know on that defensive hold we saw the only two people left standing were the tanks and even when they did get eliminated eventually they, it's it's sort of like that battle cry you know just holding out just long enough for your reinforcements to get here just long enough to to protect what you needed to and then you die valiantly and i think that's been big head this whole time yeah and i mean i I just find that the tanks are they always seem to be the backbone of the team really because i mean whenever you lost a main tank in specific comps it's like you were bound to lose the fight mm -hmm. uh, but if you lose a dps or maybe one of your supports depending on uh who it is and really what kind of comp you're running of course if you lose a moira it's gonna be really hard to come back from it if you're running this uh double barrier um but in other metas you know maybe if you just lost a lucio or Maybe you've lost like a Zen and dive or something like that. It was always kind of redoable. But if you ever lost a tank, especially the main tank, you're kind of done for. Yeah. Unless you're able to pick up theirs relatively fast. Uh huh. It's really difficult to play without a main tank. And you don't, like you say, it's very, you don't feel the effects of it until it's not there anymore. You know, you don't feel, even when you're playing like dive, you don't feel the effects of, you know, losing your monkey losing your winston until he's actually gone and you don't have someone you know taking the attention away from two three squishies you know maybe a Widowmaker and a zenyatta not seeing it or you know in this meta uh baptiste and a uh and a moira so losing your main tank and keep very keeping them alive something that you know the team vancouver titans during goats was notoriously incredible at doing just keeping their main tank alive proves to be so vital in winning any sort of overwatch map regardless of mode yeah especially with how aggressive bumper was too i feel like that is something that helped him because they were so aggressive his whole team mm -hmm. had to play aggressive and really aggression is something you really like to see in this game yep and so we have defense coming out here from the side of we know him we love him it's cryptic <laughs> offense coming out here from prospect looking to get rid of that mental boom looking to find themselves Past the first objective, we ha they haven't seen objective two in time, so they want to reacclimate themselves with that, and they're looking to get right out into it. Kool Aid guy, though, on this bastion, he's making that difficult again. He's just showing them signs of Junker Town all over. Yeah, but right now with oh, Sunbun actually got uh, exited out of the game, so there's gonna be a quick pause here. But uh, what yeah. I was about to say was Kool Aid guys up there. And he's just absolutely able to put out as much damage as he wants. We saw a pull actually come out there, uh, able to get, I think it was T-Rex wing. So with your Lucio now out of the fight, it's going to be really hard to kind of go around. But uh, Big Head actually did die because they were the ones that were assigned to jump down to the point, apparently. Um, normally, yeah. uh, personally, you'd want to send maybe the Sigma down there. He has a little bit more of that staying power, especially since his barrier is so easily movable. Yep, you um, can drop the Baptiste too. Cash. Yeah, so he's still able just... to win the fight nonetheless. Yeah, nonetheless able to win it just because of the power Kool-Aid guy has. And, you know, they have Notorious in right now instead of Orbit. And swapping in Notorious, I guess it shows that they prefer Orbit to be on a Widowmaker or a Genji. And Notorious is a projectile Farah player who's right now just raining down hell 82% of the way to ultimate. A questionable Wraith form, excuse me, not Wraith form, but a teleport coming in from Reaper. Not sure why Bin Retired did that, but one tick does go over. Very cheeky to say the least right there. Yeah, and then Miracat actually tried to boot the Bastion and put some damage out onto him, but slowly oh. they were uh, taken care of. Yeah, Notorious using that ultimate questionable usage of the Barrage, if you ask me. I mean, he's getting it very quickly, but the fight was already won right there, and he just got double tapped by Libata, who, again... You highlighted as a player to watch on this team of Prospect, their MVP right now of this series. And if they're going to do anything, they need to play off the back of this hit scan player who shows to be incredibly talented. Yeah, and it's going to be a little hard for them because of the tanks they're running. They don't really have a shield to help Labata. So Again. if they get called out, they get called out. But been retired, just teleporting straight up to him, not really caring what they're going to do. Yeah, um, he's blowing all his... <laughs> right away it's like what are you even going to do once they see that you teleport and you wraith form and so now the bastion he had the amplification matrix he rained down all the damage he needed he's got the tank form good to go and while notorious is going down the high noon does come in and gets cow at the last second just missing out the protection from the immortality lamp yeah now i mean the far is all alone you don't really have that mercy to help him out but they don't really need to help out right now because who's gonna get her 
Yeah, who's gonna get Notorious? The only person is that's able to get her is Libata, who was repositioning right there, and Sunbun, who had no mech. And so Notorious is getting himself very close to another ultimate, 65% of the way there, and there's still four other, three other ultimates at the disposal of this defense. We might be seeing another full hold right here by Cryptic. Yeah, right now it's definitely looking doable. Ultimates, you got uh, you got your Sigma ult, you got your Risa ult, which is going to be big. That Bongo is just able to put so much damage through, especially when you got a Bash in a Sigma. You really got to have to be careful of that. And T-Rex ring only is going to oh. have one ult. Unless they're going to die, they're not even going to probably be able to bring it up. Uh, yes, they're going to all have to fall back and just hope for another fight. But uh, you're just going in there trying to get a little bit more uh, damage through, maybe to build their ultimate, unless they're already at it. In that case, they were just trying to get out as quick as possible. And maybe that just seemed like the best route. I think they were trying to uh, knock them off the top, but... Kudos to Big Head, who fortified in time to stop getting knocked off. So that was a good play by him. And right now, it looks like they're slowly going in underneath. A lot of alts coming up here. Your screen's about to get very colorful in the next few seconds, I think. Yep, and the Minesweeper is dropped right on top of that Bastion, but he has the... Diva is thrown in there with the Diva Bomb, but they do get out. The Bastion is alive. That is a crucial member. If Kool-Aid guy stays alive, they can win this fight. Amplification Matrix is used, and Bam is taken down with Libala and Bam retired, lighting them up. But again, Kool-Aid guy is still alive. They have to drop this Bastion. Libala is just raining down on top of him, and Kool-Aid guy is not taking any shots. He gets dropped by the McCree from above, and the dream that looks so promising, the dream of the full hold is slipping away, and the fingertips of Cryptic are just not holding on quite enough wow you didn't even get to see the sigma ultimate come through here and they're coming up now i doubt he uses it but he's actually going to decide to use it he gets only the lucio in it and he only gets one doesn't even pick up an elimination for that bam just doing his best to try and defend this point but i think that was a lost fight to try and go after and now bam without his mate with excuse me without his gravitic flux got it that time he is going to have to back up and the dream of the full hold has been lost. Prospect finally get themselves moving and they finally get to see a second objective on a map. Yeah, and I I can't help but think what could have been different there for them. And I mean, just going through it, like, you know, I think it all just kind of fit right into place for both teams at the start. And then it slowly just started getting more and more towards uh, the favor of uh, Cryptic or uh, Prospect there. Um, yeah. With Levada just able to take up that free space, the Arisa had to jump off the high ground, Ooh. big head, and it's just going through right now, cleaning up as many people as they can, just going through the second point with relative big ease. Stagger kills. Jeez, very Lee, tough for them. Lee Bada with the tactical crouching, as well. Very important. Good job, Lee Bada. Yeah. Dodge those headshots. Yeah, make sure that uh, no one's able to, I don't know, knock a tactical crouch. You know, everyone needs a little bit. Exactly, that's what you need. Oh, it releases some stress. Exactly, it relieves the stress. It gets you out of that funk. And Cow, trying to get himself into the fight right now, uses Guardian Angel. Sunbun dropping down that lamp, but a somber EMP is used. Kool-Aid guy gets five members of the D the offense, excuse me, in the EMP. And now with Kool-Aid guy carrying the team through this fight, I think we can see Cryptic finally find their footing here. And they can just get these eliminations, but the target focus oh. is not there, I think nine the point oh no oh man no uh, i was so worried about that the whole time i saw it was only 0.61 and i was like please don't please don't please don't and then it was a pretty even fight there about the same number of people but unfortunately they got off the point so kills don't really matter the point matters you gotta look at the big picture yeah and uh they were, i think they might have been a little too tunnel vision there at the end i agree they they got a little too focused on the kills and that's usually the tank's job, so they got to be a little more aware of where they should be in a little... Dishing out these E-limbs, but that's the pass. The present is now. The car is moving through third objective, and the coalescence is coming out from Estal, who throws it in with the Diva Bomb. We see a oh, beam no. drop the bomb, and the bomb falls right on top of Notorious' head, <laughs> making him and Astro with it. Been returned, and Marikag getting some kills of their own and Prospect finally getting themselves cemented onto this payload, very close to finishing out the third objective, and what once seemed to be a full hold from Cryptic is turning into a pretty convincing run here by Prospect. That was insane. They were able to pick up that first point barely at the end, 
they steamrolled through the second point, and then this third point, as soon as they were met with a little resistance, they threw in the bomb into the back, and it landed right on top of Lovata's head, mm -hmm. and just, boom, gone. Everything is just over. They got to hurry up, reset, or uh, not Lovata. What? No. Yeah, it was Lovata. It was oh, on... No, it was Lee Bada on their team. Who I'm not sure. It was notorious. It was yeah. Notorious. It was notorious. I, I said Lobata because I was so used to him playing the McCree. I yeah, McCree he's the one who's I whipping just... out the the strong McCree play every time. Yeah, but still, I mean, that was a good diva bomb. Like Sunbum was just able to toss it in the back line. They waited a second before they pressed Q, which is something you normally want to do when you're playing diva and you're throwing in the defense matrix. You don't want to just immediately press left shift and Q because it might blow up too high into the sky for it to see as much potential. So I imagine they let it flat for a little bit. And it landed right on top of the head of Notorious and just blew him and I think Astro up as well. I could be mistaken. No. Wait. Yes? Yeah. I think it was. It was the Lucio. <laughs> I'm so. It was one of them. I swear. I saw it happen. I, don't know. I swear, dude. I swear, dude. Ah! But yeah, it was Astro on the Lucio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, but it was a really good Diva Bomb, well placed. Everyone had to try to run away, back off, find some type of cover, and that was just able to open up the points so much more for them to make it, well, that much more doable to not only take the final point after almost getting full held, but over a minute in the time bank. So oh, even yeah. if they are able to make it all the way there, they're still going to have another chance. Yeah, that's a complete 180 by them, so kudos to them. That's a really good job. Both these teams showing they can bounce back from adversity a very admirable trait to see them. And so now the Bastion composition is going into the side of Prospect. They get to be the ones to dish out a little bit of this damage. Let's see if they're as practiced on it. They do only have one shield, though. Questionable to go that route with Notorious going onto this Genji, just laying into the Bastion, forcing him to relocate and reposition with a suboptimal choice of positioning, if you ask me. One tick already going into the offense, and Cryptic look like they are pissed off. Yeah, they definitely are happy about it. And right now, they're just taking this point as fast as they can. Notorious was able to get into that back line and take out T-Rex Wing fairly fast. You know, that's something she's got to be ready to see is that Genji come in and be ready to use that immortality to either save themselves or save someone else. And eventually, they were just able to start rolling through that. Kool-Aid guy also got the hack onto the Sigma very early on, too. So they were down. It made it really difficult for them to continue on there. Kudos to the DPS really uh, kind of showing up there at the start of the match or start of the uh fight to yeah look at it make their team more and more able to notorious getting himself a kill almost getting that blade up unfortunately he does die but they do a little damage he gets the blade now he respawns and this just sets up cryptic to take some positioning get themselves a little comfy big head tussling for that high ground with sunbun who does get hacked so both the monkeys forfeiting that for the time being but the EMP comes in, Minesweeper's oh. thrown down, everybody just hits Q right okay. there, that's gonna be a one fight for Cryptic, oh my god! I mean, if you really want to secure the fight, you can totally do that, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Minesweeper, Nano Boost, Genji's Dragon Blade, everybody, the EMP, god, who hit Q, just Big Head and Astro, wowza! Yeah, I mean, you know, if you really want to just hurry up and get that fight one, I mean, that's definitely the way you're going to want to do it. They probably wish they didn't use as much. Look at the uh, time in there, but they have so much time on the bank or in the yeah, in the bank, in the uh, bank, on the bank. They have the so bank, much on the bank. They can do whatever they want, honestly. Yeah, they can buy whatever they want with how much they have in the bank right now. And buying a, uh, a little bit more time to get some alts is probably what they're hoping to do. Yeah, I guess that investment was a little too much right there from Astro throwing down the beat. Bob comes back in return and the ult for an ulti, but you gotta wonder who went out on that trade. Diva Bomb thrown down, takes out Cow. <laughs> and so many ultimates are being used in this fight, and you gotta question why any of them are really used in the first place. Yeah, I mean, using ults right now on the side of Cryptic probably uh, isn't really something you'd wanna do here. Meerkat though throwing in that bomb to the back line. I mean, that wasn't the worst thing I could have ever seen, you know what I mean? Like, it was able to not only get the pick off, but zone out people from uh, continuing forward. So it was pretty good Diva Bomb coming out there. But now on the side of, uh, side of Cryptic, they're coming up close to their EMP. And they're getting pretty oh. close to another Nano Blade. But Lobata's just going to be uh, stopping that dream from happening anytime soon and make him go back. And see, they're doing so well because they won that first fight without any, like, Nano Blade, without any need for any real ultimates and as i say that bam drops the first of the fight
getting a few members distracted with this minesweeper takes out his stall and they're just gonna say screw it and throw these ultimates into it the dragon blade comes out and without the emp even being used or the nano boost only one kill gets picked up going to be the mech finally though we will see this fight win out for cryptic and they still have that emp they still have that nano boost they're going to have a very scary monkey during that next fight if you ask me yeah i imagine oh, there it is win right about now <laughs> look at that that and monkey is just real angry he's just jumping in he's got electricity coming out of every pore on his area bin retired gets hacked the emp comes in just to do good measure down onto that doom fist but we will see the coalescence used trying to keep his team alive Sunbun takes out one with Bam responding with a kill of his own. And I do not think that the offense has much more to do here except die or get themselves back to spawn because the defense looks so strong. Just getting a little too aggressive if you ask me, Bin. Yeah, and now, you know, you still have a couple ults. You know, you can just go at it again. And I mean, with how close they are, they can just stack ults like they did on that second point if they really wanted to just save up all that time and use it there. I imagine that's probably what they're not going to want to do, but speaking Astro, of things you might not want to do, the sound be coming out from Astro right now. What? What? Uh, I think that might have been a fat finger. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's give him the yeah. benefit of a doubt. You know, it happens. Everyone's been there. Everyone's done it. But, I mean, oh, you're going to wish you had that back because mm -hmm. the ultimate's coming up now uh, for the side of Prospect. They got the bob, so you're not gonna really have anything to counter that unless you just sleep dart it and hope that that doesn't get anything done after that. Yeah, Bam using his mines questionably, throwing them down onto the point. Not really much to to look at when he throws them down. The rest of the team is just kind of lost right now. We see Big Head pick up a kill and functional fight. Ultimately, not going to be too worth it for the offense until Big Head decides screw it. I'm gonna invest everything. Chucks out his ultimate. The hack goes down on ten. This offense go full throttle into this fight because they have Kool-Aid Guy, they have Notorious, they have Cow, they have all the tools they need. They just need to make sure that the pieces fall into place properly. The blade comes out, the nano boost is thrown down, the purple is used, and the tire gets canceled out at the last moment. He doesn't pick up any kills with it right there, and the EMP is still not out. Kool-Aid Guy, when are you going to use this? You better use it soon. Well, actually, now that fear down, it doesn't have to be as soon as you think. With the bomb oh. being thrown in and soon the bob as soon as uh, very uh, nice shield right there okay. coming in from big head and the emp is used as time expires basically in the relevant ultimate right there and you know cryptic they do win out faster but i i just feel like they could have done it even quicker than they did yeah not not as much as you think they would have ended up with there, just shy of two minutes but both sides now have made it there with over a minute on the clock and now I think it's just going to come down to who's going to have this better defense because uh, before we saw that Cryptic were able to just demolish Prospect's defense fairly fast, but uh, it did take Prospect, Prospect uh, quite a little bit before they were actually able to break through the, uh, Cryptic's. So really when you think about it, this fight, now that the time is so short, definitely probably favors more towards Cryptic. I have to agree. Cryptic just feel like they... It feels like they dictated the pace and the the momentum of that whole last map. You know, they, they stormed in through Objective 1, they rolled through Objective 2, and Objective 3 didn't... F I don't know if it's just me, but it didn't feel much like it was Prospect outplaying Cryptic, but more so Cryptic outplaying themselves. Yeah, and now going into it, I think that it's going to be really hard to kind of actually attack this i mean you know kind of what they ran before but what really worked out for them was when they lost their positioning and had to give up and go down to the point that's when uh prospect was actually able to pick up those kills and take the point so now that they're probably going to have this position for a good time and they have the bastion arisa uh set up double barrier you got a sim as well it's going to be really hard for them to get onto this point to begin with yep and with only 60 seconds remaining. That's about one to two more fights, depending how quickly they go. But a nice rotation coming in here from Cryptic. Setting up Notorious a little farther away, keeping him safe. Oh no! The dive comes in Notorious! 
questionable. What are you doing there, buddy? And that's just going to be the defense falling apart right now. As Prospect, they smell blood in the water, and they just attack. They sink their fangs into it, and now they're going to look for taking control of this objective and moving the payload in overtime. That was so unfortunate for the side of Cryptic. Notorious took that teleporter, and as soon as he took it, Lobata had already gotten it down so damaged that he broke it as soon as he went over. The anti-nade was uh, actually able to come out too from T-Rex wing, so that Bastion was absolutely done for. And speaking of absolutely done for, so was that defense once that Bastion was lost. Yeah, I mean, losing the president and protect the president composition is always going to spell disaster for you. And now they need to find a way to get their footing again with Cow getting eliminated, getting staggered. He comes back on the Lucio, maybe just to get back a little quicker, but they have a lot of ground they need to get they need to get back before they can even consider taking this payload. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard for them to Ooh, be able to go. Good Junk start here. It's a good way to start off. They're not gonna have the tire for this next fight. They need to go in now. Now's their time. Yep, there's time is now. It's up and John Cena is calling something in that order, but no one got a line! Everyone not got again. Not a single kill was out there for either team. Ben oh. had just been resurrected, oh. but everybody got off the point. Oh man, Zach, what is this? <laughs> I can't believe that just happened again. <laughs> what it looked like to be such a promising offense. <sighs> that that looked so promising from Prospect. They were on their way to getting themselves onto a third point. I think I was so confident they were going to have this momentum swinging for them and then just one step off cuz in overtime at that point, if you get off for half a second, you're done. That's Man, that was crazy. I mean, yeah, you know, I think the issue was that they didn't have a designated person to sit on that cart and since they weren't really running a bash or anything. So once everybody got aggressive, that time went down too fast for everyone to even notice. Oh, crap. None of us are near the cart. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on the side of Cryptic, you probably have the biggest grins on your face. And on the side of Prospect, you are probably very upset right now. <laughs> yep, that is something I can see. A little, a little clearly. I can see happening just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah. I'm but cool. they have to play defense now because they may have accidentally gotten off the cart, but that's still a decent amount of distance they covered, you know? With only two minutes on the clock, it's going to take a first fight guaranteed win from Cryptic to get themselves moving without overtime ticking in. So we'll have to see how well this defense comes in. No Bastion being used the first time we've seen so far on this map. Y'all question whether or not that's a good choice. We'll see how this fight breaks down to tell you that. Bam gets dropped very low. Both tanks incredibly low. Cow needs to get himself a little bit of ultimate charge. So is Astro. Throwing down with the Hammond. And now we're going to see the fight breaks down with Big Head losing his life first. And that's just going to be the side of Cryptic having to regroup and go back to spawn because they do not have a lot of time to play with here. Yeah, thankfully they did have a little bit more time to play with than the set of Prospect did at the start. But as we can see right now, Prospect aren't making any mistakes right now. They knew that they made that big mistake there. They don't want that to be their factor of whether or not they win or lose this map. So they're trying their hardest right now to hold this. Uh, the Orisa stuck down on there. So right now uh, you're leaving your supports a little bit open. So that Genji, when he goes in, he's going to be attacking that on a T-Rex wing. And she's going to have to be worried about him. Has to throw down her nade to stop it. Oh, and Bin retired. Focus is down. Cow, that poor Ana living the support lifestyle gets dropped, but Big Head takes out Libata, and that's going to be a 5v4 in advantage of our offense. But Bin retired is evening up that score right now, taking out Astro, evening this up to a 4v4. It's a back and forth engagement right now with the offense winning out right now with a one kill lead, maybe one and a half, with an EMP being used. A slam down thrown by Bam, and now we're going to finally see Cryptic take the payload, and they only have to move half of the distance to objective three maybe a little more to get themselves a 3-1 series win yeah and i mean they have the alls to do it right now but you do also have a couple alts on the side of prospects so i think right now this nanoblade is probably going to be the make or break they don't really have a defensive vault or even an immortality to do anything against it so i mean as long as they stay on the cart they should be fine <laughs> That's a big if, though, as we've learned from this series. Anything can happen, and anyone accidentally W. 
hack comes in onto Estal's Mercy. They throw out the Nana Boost, they throw out the Dragon Blade, and they're looking to just one the other team. It's Weaver. We see no Tories going in the back line. He gets one, he gets two, he's looking for a third, but he has no more targets left to pick from because they have already dropped the entirety of the defense. And what looked so promising for Prospect is going to turn into a 3-1 series loss. GG well played. Cryptic securing themselves a dominant victory. And wow. <laughs> this whole map was just a lot of a they lot. weren't on the point. Big plays, you know? It's just crazy how everything was going down this match. It's you just know? oof. It's overwhelming. So many things were happening at so many different times. You didn't know if someone was about to win the fight or lose the fight, pretty much all based on ultimates or based on who was staying on the point but everyone was trying to do their job and you know one thing happened they just didn't have someone with the job of staying on the card exactly so i think that's what costed them this map and you know it's gonna be real hard to look at that if you want to get better you're gonna need to get some views and why you lost it you know it does stink that that c9 happened but there's a lot that led up to that that put them in that position in the first place you know there's a lot they could have done to not even be in overtime you know and that's what they need to look at to improve yeah so i think i think when they're gonna go look back at this vod they're gonna see a lot of good things of course but you know no one ever plays perfect uh, neither team played 100 percent perfect neither team will ever probably play 100 percent perfect but it's always just about slightly improving yourself and making sure uh, that next time this situation arises that they're gonna be ready you know exactly and it is a 3-1 series loss, but it's a lot closer than a 3-1 series tells us. Yeah, this, it felt like the whole time it was super close. The only one that really seemed kind of out of the ordinary there, where one team kind of took it over for a little bit of a test drive, was Junkertown. Junkertown, I'd say, was the most dominant map. But every yeah. other map, super just back and forth. It was a really neck. good series. Very even, yeah. Very entertaining. Speaking of entertainment, speaking of winning we have one of the members of the winning team right now we have bam from cryptic joining us bam how are you doing bud i'm doing pretty good tonight after well i'd hope so after that nice win you guys pulled out a 3-1 over prospect so how did you guys feel coming into this were you confident you guys were going to get a victory did you feel a 3-1 did you think you were even going to drop a map what were you thinking i mean i feel like it was a lot i feel like we were going to do a lot better on drunker town since i was like Kind of just a better map in overall and i think i think i'd be confident to say that that's our best map so on numbani we kind of just came in like to the mindset that we can't really like get cocky or anything about it so we just kind of played to our best on both the maps and we won definitely yeah i mean it's hard to argue junker town's your best when we look at what happened on junker town it might be considered a slaughter in some countries yeah <laughs> Uh, really good overall the whole map there we even saw you were uh, able to pick up one of the play the games I believe with Sigma I think it was on Junkertown even uh, you're showing really good Sigma play do you practice him a lot or was he someone you just decided to pick up recently or have you been playing him since PTR what's kind of the story behind that I actually like played the first game like as he kind of got released into the PTR I took a break from playing him to like start playing a little bit more ball which you kind of saw later in the series but mm -hmm. I've kind of been like practicing them a lot more recently as well. Since our team really didn't have an assigned Sigma player before that, I kind of just uh, kind of stepped up to take it role. Yeah, and we've seen Sigma played as, uh, you've seen some use him as kind of that off tank or main tank. And it's, he, he, I feel like he fits in that hybrid category. But when it comes down to your team, do you feel that he does fit a little more into that off tank role, into more of the main tank role? What kind of does it feel like? I mean, I'm a main tank player personally, but I honestly felt like I was playing a more, more as an off tank because like with my team's positioning, I was allowed to like play with a lot more off angles. Like if you know Gator from the Atlanta Rain, I was kind of oh, like yeah. mimicking his play style, like just going full Yada Chad. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely someone you really want to watch right now when it comes to single play. He's been doing really oh, yeah. well. Even with uh, his loss to the Spark just now, it, yeah, it's really... It, it's, it's an upsetty wrist and spaghetti moment to see. Um, <laughs> but hey, you know, at least you were able to pick something up here today and a pretty good win at that. Did you guys kind of have any uh, team comps in mind that you wanted to use on any map in particular that might have been seen as a little bit more cheesy or off meta? I mean, 
I would say just like the meta, like the current meta that you see in Overwatch League is like the double barrier. Well, we kind of have, that's kind of what we had planned in mind. It's like sort of the pirate ship on Junker Town for offense. Mm -hmm. And besides that, I would just really only say like playing dive on New Bonnie. That's really it. Everything else kind of just wing, depending on like how our members were feeling at the time. Yeah. And I'm sure you know that Cryptic and Prospect have played each other in the past. So did you guys go over that VOD maybe and kind of see how you guys played differently and how they played differently? And did you kind of have an idea of what you were going to be getting yourself into when you went into this match? Uh, I actually joined the team more recently, like a few weeks back, but we did end up doing a VOD review like on kind of how we performed and how we could improve things, like just overall. And then uh, my last question is, when the C9 came out, uh, what was the comms like? Like in that last, almost last round in Mbani, and that C9 went through, what were, uh, what were the comms sounding like? We were just like laughing because of it. We had like me and uh, me and I think it was our main support cow just kind of claim claimed it because I like booped back the Ana with a rock and he said he booped the Lucio out. So we're still <laughs> we kind of want to see the VOD review so we can see who actually kind of won us that round. Yeah, get that pinpoint moment. All right, well exactly. that's gonna do it for uh, questions from me. Beanies, you have any more questions for him? I guess I just had one I was thinking about. Uh, I'm not sure if this was a you know anything out of. The game realm but swapping between orbit and notorious is, is that something you do with you know orbit seeming like a proficient sniper player a proficient widow maker is that like a pick you would make on those long range maps like the junker town when you had him in oh yeah definitely i i would say that he impacted like the team play for like for his hit scan and somewhat genji we subbed him in on horizon lunar quality because he's just kind of popping off on mm -hmm. See, apparently he said he was popping off on Widow before, and then they just kind of trusted it. Sometimes he's just feeling it. I respect it. And yeah. kudos to you guys to put Some in the faith. In it. Is. So, I mean, after that, really, that's all I have to say, all I have to ask. Uh, if Bam, if you had to give an opinion, who's your MVP from your team this match? Uh, hmm. It's a good question. You can say yourself. I gotta say... I'm, honestly, I wouldn't say myself since I only play two out of the four maps. I gotta shout out Aster, honestly. You're just playing so consistently well the entire game. Kudos. Just, like, get, coming up with the clutch plays whenever you need them. Amazing ult timing for majority of the time. Just like kind of shot calling a lot. Same with me. And yeah, it's just a really good team player all around. Awesome. Well, I mean, people in chat, you heard it from Bam. Make sure you get you got all your votes in for who the of this series. A close one, a close 3-1. Bam, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Enjoy the victory. Good job today, dude. Yeah, All great right, job. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See uh, you, kid. Cut off a <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, we, we can guess what he was going to say. You know, thank you guys so much uh, for allowing him to do this interview. You know, of course. Um, of course. But now, this is the big reveal. MVP, today's MVP, Elithian. Elithian is Elithia. I said N at the end. Elithia and Elithia is your MVP today. I apologize. I just couldn't pronounce it. Elithia. You just gotta take your time and say it sometimes. Yeah, I can't. Well, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Kudos to you. Kudos to Elithia. Congrats on that MVP and congrats on the victory. It was a great time. Yeah, it was It was definitely a fun match to watch. Super back and forth the whole time, like we said. Except for mm -hmm. Junker Town, that's definitely where uh, Cryptic definitely showed themselves. That they were a very dominant team once they got on a map that they were very comfortable on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We heard Bam say it. We saw it happen. It must be true. The Brett, what is it? The, the something in the pudding. So, the truth is in the pudding. There's a saying oh, yeah. like that. Truth is in the pudding. We all know that, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah, knows yeah, that saying. I, you know, it's in it's in the wooden letters that your mom has in the living room. You know? Exactly. You know, I've, everybody has it. in the pudding? Everybody knows. Everybody well, knows. <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody, don't forget, though, like we said all all day, like we said all match, don't forget to follow and subscribe Star Esports. Very close to getting our fifth Twitch emote. Make sure you guys help us get there. September, throw us some love with your subscription. Half off for only... The month of september Pretty give cute. us a follow if you don't want to spend any money we still love 
any kind of support you throw away throw our way and then if you want to take that extra step why don't you get yourself a team and start competing in these tournaments like you just saw cryptic and Pros prospect to do yourself yeah i mean you know why not i think if you play overwatch you should probably you know join a team or be active in the esports community in some way shape or form because it's just such a great community to be in you can improve yourself not only as a player but maybe as an individual to your everyday life when you get to like work with teams you know that can help whether it's with oh, a yeah. job or with another sports team uh if you're still in school and you do stuff like that yeah it's, it's just a good thing to do i think if you got some free time and you just want to go ahead and put it in yeah well that's all i think i have to say zach you got any last words you want to give to these people um other than thanks for coming out not really um yes. yeah thank you guys thank you guys for watching thank you guys for supporting local overwatch communities and these tournaments that pop up people like you make them happen and help these grow so thank you for watching one last time i've been beanies i've been talking in your ear this has been zach aka poor zach and hopefully you guys enjoy this and you come back in the future gg well yeah. played everybody gg